Today, we're going to talk about sampling and sampling bias. Remember that the best way to study is to take practice tests. And if you can't find good practice tests, build your own and learn while you do it using the Learn My Test Study tool. It's absolutely free at learnmytest.com. And also, check the description of this video to take a practice test that I made using the Learn My Test Study tool. Bill, a doctoral student, tells his faculty mentor, Dr. Smith, that he has a great idea for research study. And so Dr. Smith says, that's pretty interesting. What is it? Bill says that he wants to see what type of college majors experience the most anxiety. Bill says that he plans to recruit people for the study from his Intro to Psych course by offering them extra credit. And Dr. Smith says, okay, good. Bill must send a protocol or document to his university's Institutional Review Board, or IRB. The IRB is a division at a university which helps determine if a researcher's study is ethical, and specifically not doing any harm or taking advantage of people that participate in the research study. The specific things the IRB is looking for is an informed consent document that all study participants read and sign before participating in the study. In psychology, some studies cannot tell the participants about the purpose of the study because them not knowing the purpose of the study is important for the scientific nature of the study. Like Stanley Milgram, who studied compliance to cruel commands from authority figures, had to convince people that a man in a lab coat was telling them to administer a shock to someone in another room when really it was a recorded actor. If the person knew that there was not another person getting shocked, it would have ruined the study. So in cases like Milgram's where deception is needed, the experimenter has to share the purpose of the study with the examiner as soon as the study is concluded. The other thing that the IRB guarantees is that people's information will be kept private, meaning that they will be in a space where people cannot overhear or see any of the information they are providing during the study. And confidentiality is making sure that their responses and data uh, that will not include any identifying information such as their name, date of birth, or social security number. For example, a researcher may get someone else to assign a number to a participant so that number can be used rather than using the person's identity connected with their responses. Now that the IRB has approved Bill's research, he can start recruiting students from his Intro to Psych class by offering them extra credit to participate in his study. Bill's study is a survey that asks participants their major and gives them the Generalized Anxiety Disorder 7, or GAD-7, which is a brief questionnaire on participants' anxiety symptoms that they have experienced in the past two weeks. A research participant or subject, both terms can be used interchangeably, is an individual who participates in a research study. So this student who raises his hand and decides to participate would be considered a participant or subject. All of the subjects or participants in the study combined together is referred to as the study sample. The study sample is supposed to represent a larger population of people or the population. So in Bill's study, for example, the sample of college students in his study may represent the entire population of college students in the United States. Bill's sample of 14 college students that he recruited for his study is supposed to represent the millions of college students in the United States. When Bill's sample does not represent the population of college students very well, this would be called sampling bias. So let's review Bill's sample as a whole. He has 11 females and 3 males, so 21% of his sample is males. He has zero Latinos or African Americans in his sample, and 93% of them are freshmen, and the remaining 7% is only due to one senior, so he has no sophomores and no juniors. All the students were recruited from one university in the United States, the University of Indiana Southeast. Let's look at college students in the United States. Do you think that more than 21% of them are male? If so, then Bill's sample does not adequately represent males in comparison to the population. So that would indicate a degree of sampling bias towards females. 
Do you think there's more than one African-American college student in the United States? Of course there is. So since Bill's sample doesn't include any African-Americans, we really can't say that his sample is representative of African-American college students. The population of college students in the United States also includes Latinos. And Bill's sample does not include any Latinos, so we also can't say that his sample is representative of Latino college students. The population of college students also does, spoiler alert, include ju sophomores and juniors. It doesn't just include freshmen and seniors. And so Bill's sample does not include any sophomores and juniors. And so it really wouldn't be a representative sample of college students, of all college students. Bill's sample recruited from a small school in Louisville, suburban area, Indiana University Southeast, and nowhere else in the United States. Since Bill only collected from one small school in Indiana, can we really conclude that his sample represents all the colleges in the United States? Probably not. Bill's sample is not representative of all the schools in the United States. Dr. Smith advises Bill that his sample is not really representative of the population of all college students. The findings of his research is limited to freshman Caucasian college students at Indiana University Southeast. This is what studies refer to when they say the term limitations. Bill gets his results back and concludes that engineering majors have more anxiety than psychology majors. He concludes that psychology majors through studying psychology are better equipped to deal with anxiety than engineering majors. Let's take a closer look at Bill's sample of psychology, psychology majors versus engineering majors. The psychology major group has three males and the engineering major group has, includes all females. So first we can conclude that this is not a good sample of engineering majors as engineering tends to have a majority of males rather than females. And then second, females tend to report more anxiety symptoms than males. So Bill's findings may be a result of the unequal distribution of males and females between his two groups. So it may not be that psychology majors are better at coping with anxiety. His results may be because the psychology group has more males and they're less likely to report anxiety symptoms than females. Bill does not recognize this and presents his findings to Dr. Smith, explaining that his independent variable college major is causing a change in his dependent variable anxiety, specifically that his group of engineering majors reported more anxiety than his group of psychology majors. After going through Bill's data, Dr. Smith explains to Bill that his findings are not that being an engineering major causes you to be more anxious, it's that the different proportion of males in his sample of engineering majors likely explains the difference. She tells Bill that when a third variable explains the relationship between the independent and dependent variables, that is called a confounding variable. Which, is, which was the case with gender in Bill's study. What other sampling biases do you think might occur with Bill's sample that we didn't already discuss? You may want to think back to the very beginning of the video and how Bill recruited his subjects. Remember that Bill said he was going to recruit people from his introduction to psychology class by offering them extra credit? Since Bill only recruited from his Introduction to Psychology class, he only recruited engineering majors that took Introduction to Psychology. There are definitely engineering majors who never took Introduction to Psychology that exist in the population. Another reason why this is not a representative sample of engineering majors. So Bill offered extra credit as an incentive for his students to participate in his study. By doing this, Bill excluded all of the students that were not interested in completing the study for extra credit. The students that were not interested in completing the study for extra credit are still part of the population of college students, another reason why Bill's sample is not representative of the population. And it's also important to note that college students motivated enough to complete 
extra credit may have different characteristics than college students who are not motivated enough to complete the extra credit. In an ideal world, the researcher would know everyone in the population you are studying and everyone in the population would be dying to participate in your research study and you could pick people randomly from this big population to participate in your study, which is called random sampling. Random sampling is the gold standard and eliminates sampling bias. However, in reality, you don't really know everyone who would participate in your study. You don't know everyone in the population and people are usually not excited to give their time to participate in research studies. So as a researcher, you do your best by finding people in the community and offering incentives like in Bill's case, which lead to some cases, a degree of sampling bias. Stratified sampling is a strategy to have your sample representative of the population by recruiting the same proportion of people in each group relative to your sample. For example, if my population was 70% Caucasian and 30% African American, I would recruit a sample that is 70% Caucasian and 30% African American. This is called stratified sampling. Click in the description of this video to take a practice test on psychology that I made using the Learn My Test tool. Remember that the best way to study is to take practice tests, and if you can't find good practice tests, build your own and learn while you do it using the Learn My Test study tool. It's absolutely free at learnmytest.com. Thank you so much for watching.